So it's my opinion that there are uh, two forms of artists. There are artists that make art for other artists, and then there are artists that make art for people that buy art. And I think there are similarities between the two, but I also think that there are major differences. And sometimes these artists find themselves uh, on different sides of the fence. I'm not going to say that they're opposition because they're in two different realms, but they're on different sides of the fence. The funny thing is, is that many times both of those artists want the same monetary outcome. And I'm going to explain the dynamics of both. The artist artist makes work that speaks a language that only artists can understand. And they're appreciated by artists in a way that is very different than art that's appreciated by people um, that buy art at a very practical level. And the people that buy art at a very practical level are the people that may buy prints from Hobby Lobby. They may buy prints from uh, Ross. Things that look good in their house and fill spaces. And there's a part of me, I can't even lie, that cringes at the thought of that. But I've learned to develop another part of me that understands those parts. You see, with the artist's artist, art means more than something to look good on the wall. It has a deeper context. It has a deeper meaning. And because of that, sometimes the aesthetic attractiveness of it isn't necessarily considered, especially if you get into the ideas of conceptual art. It, it's dictated more by the, the inner, what's going on internally the idea behind it. Now, when you get into practical art, there are people that, there's different kinds of practical art. And I'm going to use some examples that people love to, I mean, you know, when you have conversations about art that, that's not very good, these names come up for artists, artists, not for practical people. Thomas Kincaid is one of the first names that comes up. And this is on the, the practical tier of um, art for, for practical people who buy art. Thomas Kincaid had the, um, the uh, in the mall, you could go into the Thomas Kincaid uh, gallery showroom. And his work was sold the same way as furniture. Uh, a lot of it was manufactured uh, by printing, and then the artist, some of them not even him, would apply little dabs of paint. Um, it would have his signature on it somehow, and it would be sold as an original Thomas Kincaid for um, a fraction of what uh, many traditional uh, oil painting artists would price their work for. And these flew off the wall. It's like Norman, Norman Rockwell. A Norman Rockwell uh, painting was, it, it spoke to, uh, you know, a large, it's a large piece of, uh, of Americana, and it spoke to the hardworking public, and it was made accessible. Norman Rockwell images today are sold as uh, prints, they're sold as all these, these in these, all these different um, vehicles. On the higher end, you have an artist like Jeff Koons. And Jeff Koons is essentially a, um, a printout factory of 2D, or, and, well, mainly 3D sculptures, if you think about it. Um, Bubbles the Monkey, which was created by him, I think that was a solid 24 karat gold piece. Um, for many artists, it held absolutely no value as far, of it, as, far as its creative expression. But the person who purchased that, and I think, I guess it was Michael Jackson, it would have to have been Michael Jackson because it's Bubbles the Monkey. Michael Jackson has the exact same thing in common as the person who buys from the Thomas Kincaid Gallery. And that's not to say that Michael Jackson didn't have pieces of art that were artist art works. But it does illustrate a certain mentality, which is different than, than one another. With artist art, you're making work that speaks to the artist first. 
And the residual is that a consumer understands it. I can't tell you the number of times that I've gotten high fives for a piece of art that, you know, and there were there were friends that were like, man, this is a breakthrough. Right now you're having a breakthrough. And they were they would tell me this is some of the best stuff that you've ever done. Well, 10 years later, the, the stuff that I've the best stuff that I've ever done is still sitting in my in my living room. And the stuff that I was making, and here's what I I try not to make anything that I'm not proud of. But sometimes I just have the urge to paint. Sometimes I just have the the, the urge to make a a sculpture that that is very basic as far as what it's trying to do. If it's trying to look like a a figurative sculpture of of a man or a woman, then it looks like a figurative sculpture. Those are the ones that sell. Those works are the works that actually sell. Now, an interesting question. Which work is more important? And I say this as the devil's advocate. In the end, I find that both artists want the same monetary outcome for their work, and they both have the same concern when it doesn't sell. So as the answer to that question is very simple, both are important. And even deeper than that, it's very important for the artist to have an understanding of both ways of thinking. The artist that has an understanding of both ways of thinking has a better shot at connecting to people that will buy the work, will appreciate the work, and ultimately uh, understand the work. But you have to meet both audiences where they're at if you choose to be in the arena, or not artists, but the buyer where they're at. If you want to, if, if you're gonna, if you're gonna connect to them, you have to meet them, you know, halfway in the arena. And that calls for you understanding how somebody else might think. A lot of times when you understand an artist, you're just understanding a mirror of yourself. When you understand a buyer, from buyers that understand artist art to buyers that understand um, more practical art, when you understand, and they're and they're just they're just different ends of the spectrum of the very same of the same thing. When you understand that, then you're ready to engage them as well as artists artist um, work. It's a very interesting topic, and I would love to know what what my uh, creative friends think, and I would love to know what my practical and non-creative friends think. Um, The fact that you appreciate art at all levels uh, means none of us are more important than the other. So your opinions are welcome here. Um, Leave a comment. Let me know what you think. And if you like the, uh, the material that I'm making, Go ahead, hit that subscribe button, and um, I'll see you guys next time. Take care.